Well, Ken, thanks for inviting me around. Um, as you know, we're doing this little family tree, and really I want to get everybody's recollections of, of growing up in Belfast and, of course, growing up in, in the States as well. Um, now, I call you Ken, but you weren't christened Ken. No, uh, Kenneth James Gorman. And when were you born? Uh, 30th of April, 1942. Okay, that's mid-war then? War, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you married? I'm indeed, yep. And uh, who's your lovely wife? Uh, my daughter. Okay, and have you been married long? Uh, please don't say too long. <laughs> <laughs> 1965. 1965. Any children? Um, yes, two girls. Lovely. Uh, Jenny and Jill. Jenny and Jill, and they're growing up, and ha have they children of their own? They have. Uh, Jenny lives in Belfast. She has three children. Um, the eldest one is Jessica, and then James and uh, Daniel. Okay. And Jill lives in England. Lives in the moment in Bury, near Manchester, and she has two girls, Jodie and Emily. Oh, lovely, lovely. Now I, I wonder if you take a wee look at this for me, and tell me, do you, do you? Do you, you've seen that before, I think. Oh, I have, yeah. Uh, and do you recognise the folk in the in the picture? Oh, yes, very very clearly. <laughs> and who's and who's there? Right, um, reading from left to right, uh, there's myself and then Billy Patterson, my elder sister Barbara, Trevor, my brother, Jimmy Patterson, and then at the front, Granny McCombe, and yourself sitting on her. And the lovely bouncing David Bowen in the front. <laughs> And of course, you said your eldest sister. Yeah, right. and um, there, well, there was an, um, another sister, Mavis. Yes. Who died when she was very young? Oh, she see. died in nineteen forty-eight. She was only a year and a half when oh. she died of pneumonia. That's very sad. Now, where was that photograph taken? Well, that was taken in, in the back um, gardens of Cooper Street. That's the famous two or three Cooper Street. Famous two or three. I believe you've got a few uh, memories of your time as a child with your mum down visiting your my granny and your granny. Yes, very very much so. Um, my mother spent um, well divided her time between um, thank you her own family. Uh, we lived in Joe Mark Park in North Belfast and uh, um, Cooper Street, where. Um, her mother and brothers and sisters lived. Yes. So um, she and I would walk down uh, the Shankle down to Cooper Street, and she would do housework and do messages mm -hmm. or send me That's send it. me for messages. Yeah. <laughs> and what sort of messages did you? Well, one that strikes me straight away is there was a pub just at the corner of Cooper Street and Bellevue Street. Yes. Ned's. And she would send me there for milk or lemonade. So at a very early age, you were going out to the pub then? I was going out to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me a very interesting thing, because I, I remember that pub and I remember uh, that there was a, a door on the very corner of the pub and there was a large column and kids used to swing both from the column and, and the, uh, the lamp beside it. But you've got other recollections of being as a child in Cooper Street wait, waiting for... Uh, Uncle Jimmy to come I have. Up. Uh, one of the things, um, obviously, um, as a 12 or 13 year old, I was killing time to some extent. But one of the things my mother would say, go out to the gate and wait for Jimmy. He, he worked um, in Mackey's engineering uh, firm on the Springfield Road, which wasn't that far away from Cooper Street. And um, I was standing at the gate one day and I heard this, uh, what to me was a strange sound sort of a rumbling sound and uh, the sound became louder and I became a little bit agitated and mm -hmm. not to say frightened mm -hmm. and then round the corner came uh, literally hundreds of men all running right. so I went in to the house but Jimmy explained later what had happened that um, because the um, Mackey's is in a Catholic area Springfield yes. Road when the men finished their shift on their way home they were stoned and so they took to their heels and ran and that was the running feet that I had heard okay. 
and stone uh, literally rather than being in the yeah, pub, stone yeah. with stones yeah. yes very much and that was oh, in the early 50s yes uh, but it's uh, something that has stuck with me uh, of course it all has. these years of course it has. and of course cooper street is right on the boundary between the, the protestant side and the catholic side so the men didn't have to run too many streets a couple of streets no, they didn't be. um I suppose you're talking and you're talking about three or four hundred yards, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, depend, they couldn't cut through the Catholic streets, obviously, yes. they had to take the long way around. Right. Um, but um, the other thing my mother always uh, sort of um, impressed on me, and it wasn't only my mother, it came from Jimmy as well, that. Um, it might be more from Jimmy than Mother on Reflection. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Cooper Street was regarded as the Protestant's last line of defence. Okay. Because if you wanted, I, because I had to attend the Royal Victoria Hospital, you ha if you wanted to get there, to walk there, you had to walk um, through the Catholic area. Yes. And um, normally that would be okay, but now and again there would be a few problems. But... Um, so that's the reason it was uh, regarded as the Protestants' last line of defence. And, and you said to me that the last time we spoke on one particular occasion you were going to walk to the Royal and you were challenged, but not, not by a, a body of men who challenged you. <laughs> well, I was walking up, Cane Street is directly opposite Cooper Street yes. and that's the connecting uh, route to the Royal. And that would be a Catholic area? That would be a Catholic area. And as I walked up, this uh, wee girl, she was only a couple of, well, she was a couple of years younger than me, stood out and said, where are you going? And I told her I was going, going to the hospital. She said, you can't come up our street. And I said, of course I can come up. This is the, the street to go to the hospital. Uh, you better stand aside. She said, no, you're not. This is our territory. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, move aside. And she didn't move aside. And, but... Um, Again, it, re it really reflects the, oh, the tensions that yes. existed at that time. And the, what, what, what sort of period was that? Was that you, were, you were a young juvenile or a young man? I would have been about uh, 14, 15. 14, 15. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about mid-50s, mid mid-50s. Mid mid um, so mid even though overall it was a reasonably peaceful time, mm -hmm. that there were still territorial issues going on? There were. Uh, I, I frankly always was aware of tensions uh, yes. because the other thing in terms of going messages, yes. the upper part of Cooper Street was Protestant, yes. but below the pub <laughs> was was Catholic area, right. and you wanted to get groceries, uh, get bread, butter, or whatever. Then you had to walk down, and and there was no problem walking down and then spending your money and they'll give you whatever goods you want and come back up again. But you were aware of the difference. Tension. Tension. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely were. Well, Ken, one of the things that I nearly forgot about was the uh, the story about the the bullet hole. Oh, Maybe yeah. you should tell us about that. Yeah, well, something that I had I noticed uh, on the, the door jam between the living room and the dining room in Cooper Street was this uh, clear mark. Uh, some object sort of happened, uh, obviously, uh, hit it. Okay. And when I asked about it, what happened was uh, it dated back to the troubles in the around about 1920. Okay. 20. We had a lot of civil disturbance in the, in the 20s. That's yeah. right, that's right. And my mother was walking past the window. The front window of the, the house? The front window of the house. And Jimmy, must he noticed... Um, the glint of a rifle from Cane Street. Okay, just opposite. Mm -hmm. Just opposite. And um, he threw himself across and pulled mother to the ground just as the bullet came through the window My goodness. and lodged in the door jam. My goodness. So it was always a topic of uh, conversation. Right. right. That's kind of serious. Hello, David. Hello, Mildred. Yes, we're just talking about the bullet hole. Oh, I... <laughs> The bullet hole in, in, in the window down Cooper Street. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, the first time I was ever down Cooper Street, I just, uh, it wasn't long after we were married, and uh, they were showing me that. You know, anywhere else you'd repair it, 
Mm. But here you keep it as a talking point. So it's a memento of it. <laughs> yes. And a fun thing to see. Yes. <laughs>